Hello everybody, my name is Ura and I'm the Codeholic. Today we're going to build five Laravel Livewire projects. But what is actually Laravel Livewire? Livewire is a full stack framework which gives you possibility to build dynamic interfaces without leaving Laravel. So you basically write PHP code which behind converts into JavaScript and that gives you possibility to write your dynamic code. And it also gives you possibility to reduce the time you need to build your application. Like if you are using React or Vue, you probably need to build an API and then build the interface on top of the API. In Laravel Livewire, because you do everything in PHP, you don't leave the Laravel area, you have much, you need much less time to build the same things. All right. Let's have a look at the demos, what we are going to actually build. Okay, the project number one. And you know what? We're developers, we start counting uh, from zero. Why don't we see first project number zero? Okay, okay, so let's click on counter. That's the project number zero, the simplest application you have seen probably before in other programming language if you haven't seen this in Laravel. So we have plus and minus buttons and the counter. So I click on plus, the counter increases. I click on minus, the counter decreases. And as you can see, the page is not reloaded. That's very simple application, but very hard to do in PHP. You cannot actually do this in PHP if you don't reload your page. And in this case, we are clicking, the counter increases, but the page is not reloaded. That actually is done in JavaScript, but we don't write a single line of JavaScript code. Everything is done in uh, PHP using Laravel Live Wire. Okay, let's move on on the second project, which is Calculator. So we have two inputs for the number one and number two, and we have drop down for the math operation. Okay, let's just write. 14 plus 13, click and 27, or multiply and we have some number, or percent and we have some number. Okay, so this is done in Laravel Live Wire. The next one is the application which is done billion times, uh, trillion times, I don't know. Uh, very simple to do application, but in this case we are using Laravel Live Wire and the projects are the to dos are saved in the database. So create new to do, you can hit enter or click the add. The new to do is actually added. So you reload the page and the content is there. Let's mark this as completed, reload the page and the content is there. Okay. And we can of course delete some to do's. Let's go on the cascading dropdown. Like that's a very common problem in my opinion on every website, not a problem, but common task. So you have a cascading dropdowns. Like in this case, we have continents and we have countries. So when you choose continent, it shows a loading indicator on countries. It loads them and displays. In this demo, I don't have countries actually properly assigned to continents. So probably you will see uh, countries from other continent into Asia and countries from other continent into Europe, but that's just for demonstration purposes. Okay. But this is how it is done. So when we change the continent, the request is made um, and then it updates the country. But that's very, very easy to do in Laravel Live Wire. And we don't write again a single line of JavaScript here. The next one is product search. In this case, we have data in the products table in the database and we just output uh, the tables. We have pagination. As you can see, we can navigate between pages and the page is not reloaded. That's done using Ajax, using Laravel Live Wire. And we can type uh, some text right here, uh, hit enter or just blur, and it filters the products uh, based on my keyword. Okay. And the last project is image upload. So we have already uploaded images and we have possibility to upload a new image. As soon as we upload the image, it basically gives us preview and we can click the save photo and the new image will be added immediately right here. Again, that's very dynamic, uh, small but dynamic project. And that is done without writing a single line of JavaScript. Basically, any project you see right here is done without writing a single line of JavaScript. And you know what? Uh, we have seen already five projects, 
actually 6 1 starting from 0 and I wanted to do something extra more than 5 so I created a bonus project for you let's have a look so here we have the registration page we have very simple form with four input fields and we have a radio button to choose whether I'm registering as a customer or a vendor if I'm registering as a vendor I have to prepare company name and VAT number as well okay when we are on the customer the validation field only happens on those four fields I click and we see the validation right here when I'm on the vendor however when I click register all the fields are actually required and the validation is real time it means that if I just start typing right here then the validation message disappears and finally when you fill up the form and click register we have the success notification and that is done using live wire session flash, flash messages all right if you want to see the repository for these five projects plus something zero and sixth uh, you can check the projects right here live wire projects uh, I have right here some demo pictures as well and if you find that useful I will probably add more projects in this repository or you can add more projects in this repository please consider uh, just uh, improving this project okay writing projects sending pull requests I will be more than happy to accept your pull requests and if you want to support my channel first please hit the like button subscribe to my channel if you are not yet but if you want to do more than subscribing and liking the video you can find out my donation pages uh, patreon and the other one which is buy me a coffee okay let's actually start building this project okay let's start everything by creating a new laravel project i'm going to open cmd navigate to the folder I want to create my project in and I want to run composer global require laravel installer so first I want to install laravel installer and then I'm going to create projects using my laravel installer okay laravel installer is already installed now I'm going to run laravel new and the project name I'm going to call this live wire projects hit enter this will take a few seconds or minutes depending uh, depending on your internet and many other things and i'm going to actually pause the recording and get back when this is done okay the project was successfully created next we're going to run php artisan key generate dash dash a n a n s i hit enter excuse me we need to first navigate into live wire projects and then run php artisan key generate dash dash ansi and the key was generated now i'm going to close this and let's open our project using your favorite text editor vs code or php storm or something else if you use i use php storm i'm going to open it with php storm but you can open with vs code it will be pretty straightforward okay my project is opened with php storm now i'm going to bring up the php storms integrated terminal you can bring up your vs code's integrated terminal and i'm going to run right here i we're going to install live wire basically so uh, composer require live wire slash live wire and i'm going to hit enter this will take a few seconds okay live wire was successfully installed you can have a look at the full output and then we can already create live wire projects but first let's include the live wire styles and javascript in our layout let's go under resources views and we have only one uh one view right here that's a welcome blade i'm going to actually create layout first let me create a component php artisan make component up layout that's the component i'm going to create hit enter the component created successfully let's go under up view components and up layout and i'm going to rename this component folder and call this layout and we can just call this up blade php so now in the app layout component file we're going to change the 
path to the file will be layout app. And now let's go in the welcome blade and I'm going to copy everything in the app blade. And where we have this content inside the body, I'm going to actually output slot. And in the welcome blade, I'm going to delete everything above, which is the part of the layout like this. And I'm going to use X up layout, just like this. Okay, so I save that. And now let's actually bring up the artisan server. So I'm going to open the terminal and I'm going to run PHP artisan serve. Hit enter. The serve is actually running. Let's check in the browser. Reload the page. Okay, here is our application up and running. Now let's create our first live wire component. Let's open the uh, our editor and I'm going to open new terminal and I'm going to run PHP artisan make live wire and we have to specify the component name. The component at index zero we're going to create zeroth component is the counter we're going to hit enter and it's going to create first it's going to ask if we would to start the project i actually already start the project so i'm going to write no here and the component was created uh, basically it's created two files first is the file under app HTTP live wire counter and the second is under resources views live wire counter okay this is these are the two files we are going to work but we have to do one last thing in the general layout app layout we have to include live wire styles and live wire scripts so right here I'm gonna type we have two ways to include live wire styles and scripts First is to write live wire styles right here, or the second is to write live wire styles using tag approach. Okay, I prefer the second one, so I'm going to leave the second one, and we have to include scripts as well. So before the closing tag of body, I'm going to write live wire scripts. Okay. Now let's open our counter and let's start writing code here. So first I'm going to create public property right here, which will be count. And I'm going to assign zero to that. Then I'm going to create two methods, one for increment, second for decrement. And in the increment, we're going to simply increase the count with plus plus and in the de decrement we're going to simply decrease the count with minus minus we have our uh, counter component ready now let's go in the counter blade and create styles right here so simply i'm going to create two buttons button which will be for increment and another button which will be for decrement and we're going to have single input, uh, not input, but we're going to simply have a span and we're going to output our count. So basically in LiveWire Blade file, we have possibility to use the methods and public methods and public properties of the component. Because we have right here count as a public property, we can simply output it right here. And because we have public methods increment and decrement right here, we can use that methods on the buttons. But we simply have to specify wire colon click. Whenever click happens, says this wire colon is actually necessary. Whenever click happens on that using live wire, we have to call increment method. And whenever click happens on the second button, we have to call decrement. And it is as simple as that. So I'm going to save this. And now let's have a look in the browser. I'm going to reload the page. Well, actually, we don't use that component. So let's actually go in the welcome blade. And right here, instead of that content, I'm going to use our live wire counter component. And we have to use the counter component in the following way live wire colon counter 
okay this is as easy as that we save that and let's have a look in the browser and here we see so we see two buttons and number so i click the plus button the counter increases i continue clicking on the plus button i click on minus and the counter decreases okay what happens let's actually inspect and understand how that actually works by the way if you want a full live wire course with in details and more projects please hit the like button and leave a comment down below definitely tell me if you want a full live wire uh, course with more projects okay let's reload the page and let's click on the plus button what happens whenever we click the plus button the ajax request is sent to the live wire controller live wire module when we click when we increase or decrease basically whenever we do some action which is uh, done through live wire okay and the calculation of the increase the increment and decrement is actually happens on the php side but that's done so seamlessly that we don't know that's done uh, on the backend side so it just increases and decreases so right here if we just inspect the uh, request i don't want to go into like that much details because i assume you have a little bit of understanding of live wire how that works and if you have a look in the uh, payload this is the um, this is the whole payload which is sent through the uh, from the front end we can have a look view parsed if we go in the updates we see uh, what method we call so we call a decrement method it is mentioned right here and in the preview we get the updated um, server memo we have the data count equals zero so we click right here and then we get the count equals zero right here okay so all these things are done through live wire now i want to install talwin css in this project and make the buttons a little bit more nice so let's open php storm and let's clear up everything uh, first remember one thing the latest uh, laravel projects does not come with laravel uh, mix anymore it does come with a uh, vite and it's slightly different how you configure invite so first we have to run npm install to install all the dependencies we have in the package json right here it's going to take a few seconds okay we have that now let me install um, Tailwind CSS. So let's open the browser and just type Laravel Tailwind CSS. It's going to open the very first link is what we want. We're going to copy that npm install and paste this in our project. And we have to generate the Tailwind CSS config as well. So I'm going to copy this and paste Tailwind CSS in it, and I'm going to paste this right here as well. And this example uh, is for Laravel mix. This is what something what we don't want. However, I'm going to copy the content. I want the content. Let's go in the uh, Talent config and replace that content. And we have to create right here post CSS config as well. So right click post uh, CSS dot config dot JS. And here we need um, the following code module exports plugin talon css and auto prefixer and we have to uh, so we actually installed um, talon css and we have to run npm run dev that's going to start the byte server on localhost 3000 and it's going to start serving uh, css and javascript files and we have to go into layout where is up blade and we have to include uh, white styles and JavaScript so here before the live wire styles I'm gonna write uh, white and I have to specify here an array and I'm gonna specify two resources resources slash CSS slash app CSS and resources slash js up js okay and the last thing will be to go in resources 
CSS, app CSS, and put here Talon CSS, uh, Talon CSS directives. So let's just copy and paste this that right here. Okay. Now let's open, let's open browser and reload the page. And we see that the buttons don't have any styles anymore. Let's actually add some styles to the buttons. Let's open counter blade and right here I'm going to add class and I'm going to paste a few classes and I'm going to explain. So we have vertical padding, horizontal padding, background, background on hover, borders, uh, rounded corners and text white. And let's add this right here as well. Make sure whenever you change your blade files, make sure you have npm run dev running and the white server is running because that's going to build the final Talon CSS files. Okay, so we save that and have a look in the browser, refresh that, and we see that plus and minus uh, icons right here. Let's actually put the this in the center. To put this in the center on the main div, we add the following classes. Flex, justify center, we give it a padding and gap and item center as well. So I'm going to save that and have a look in the browser. Okay, this is our counter. We click the plus button in increases, click the minus, it decreases. Okay, let's create next component, which is calculator. I'm going to close all the tabs. We don't have to do anything in the layout anymore. And let's bring up the terminal and I'm going to create new terminal and run PHP artisan make live wire calculator hit enter and let's open those two files calculator which is coming from app HTTP live wire and the second is calculator blade which comes from resources views live wire and let's work right here First, we're going to define a few properties right here. We need number one property, number two property. We need action, which will be plus, minus, multiply, division, and percent. We need result, the final result, where that should be saved. And I'm going to also create one additional property for whether the equal button should be disabled or not. If we don't write anything in the inputs, the button will be simply disabled. Now, let's create methods. Down below, I'm going to create calculate method inside which I'm going to first take those two numbers and cast them on a float because they might be strings. Then I'm going to write if statements. If the action equals minus, then we subtract. If the action equals plus, then we add. If the action equals multiply, we just multiply. If the action equals division, we divide. And if the action equals percent, we calculate the percent. We have our calculate function ready. Then I'm going to add one more function, which will be updated hook. Whenever something is updated, some property is updated in this live wire component, this method is triggered and you will also receive property right here, which property was actually updated. And we are checking right here if in whenever something is updated, basically, whenever number one equals an empty string or number two equals an empty string, we set the disabled to be true. Otherwise, we set the disable to be false. Using this approach, we will be able to disable button in the blade file. Let's go in the blade file and I'm going to actually create uh, divs with the Talon CSS classes to center everything. Flex, flex call, item center. Create another div with uh, flex and padding and gap as well. I'm creating uh, three horizontal components. So first we have the number one and it is a normal input with a type number and wire model. What is that wire model? That is a two-way binding between the number one, between the basically input value into a PHP property. Okay, whenever you type something in this input, the number one property right here will be updated. And whenever you assign something to this number one property from this component, it will be updated inside the input. And we have right here placeholder number one as well. Then we have select, which has a fixed width and wire model on action. Okay. And of course, we need options right here. Whenever we choose the option, the action property right here will be updated. Next, we have number two with the 
uh, wire module and placeholder. And down below, we have the button equal sign. Whenever we click on that button, it will call calculate method from the component, this method, okay, which will finally uh, calculate the result. And down below, we output simply output that result in a slightly larger text. And let's add some classes to this button. Okay, padding, background, text color. For disabled, we give also cursor not allowed and the opacity 90. Okay, and we also add right here check if the button, if the disabled property is set true, we add the disabled property to the button. Okay, it is as easy as that. And we save everything. And now let's have a look in the browser. Well, we don't actually use that component. Uh, let's open now roads file web PHP. And right here, I'm going to create a root. So root forget when we access calculator. Here, we can create new view file and use that calculator component in the view file, just like we did in the welcome. So if we open welcome, we see that we are using that live wire counter, okay, inside the welcome blade. We can do the same thing. However, I want to show you a second way how you can actually use the live wire component. You can directly connect road to live wire component. In this case, we want to connect that to the calculator component. So up HTTP live wire class. Whenever we access the following road, this component will be triggered and it will be simply outputted in the main layout. Okay, so we save that and have a look in the browser. So we have to access slash calculator. Hit enter. And we have small error. And the error basically is because the view file right here, the folder file should be called layouts layouts applied and let's open up http uh sorry up view components up layout and we have to change the layouts dot up and that's the default location for live wire so now we change that into layouts the folder now let's reload the page and we see calculate however some styles are missing on the input that's because we have to install Talwin CSS forms plugin. So let me actually search for Talwin CSS forms. Let's click on the very first link. And we're going to copy that, open our PHP Storm, bring up the terminal and paste that. So we have to install that. And then we have to add this in the Talwin config.js. So if we go on the left side, open Talwin config.js, and in the plugins, we paste that. Now this will add um, additional styles. Let's, let's have a look in the browser. Reload the page. And we see our inputs are now styled properly. Okay, let's change this into three, this into four, and click equal sign. And we see seven right here. Let's minus, subtract, minus one, multiply, 12, divide, 0.75 and percent is 0.12. Okay, so we created our calculator. And let's let's actually create a navbar where we link to the proper um, proper applications. Uh, let me actually open up blade PHP and right here after the opening body tag, I'm gonna copy and paste the navbar. So here we paste that, format the code, and let's have a look. So the first one is the counter. So we basically have a nav with a tags right there. Uh, however, we have added some classes, Talon CSS classes to make it nice. We have, of course, the href, and we have the following uh, request wrote is. So we basically, using this approach, we calculate which um, application is active, and we mark that page as an active in the uh, in the navbar as well okay however every route needs name so if we open web right here we have to give it a name uh, counter let's give the calculator name 
calculator. So we save that and now let's have a look in the browser. We reload the page and we see now bar and the calculator is active. So if we click counter, um, counter, we don't have actually slash counter. So let's go in the web and maybe change that into counter. And now we see the counter is active calculator and counter. Let's actually now create the third uh, or second, I don't know, uh, application, which is to-do list. Let's bring up the terminal and we're going to run PHP artisan make live wire to-do list and hit enter. It generated two files. Now let's actually close everything and open those two files to-do list and to-do list blade file and let's delete this comment uh, i'm going to create also database model for to do to do item and um yeah and migration so let's run php artisan artisan make model to do item and i'm going to generate migration as well dash m hit enter and now let's open migration file create to do items and i'm going to add two properties right here uh, first will be string which will be actual to do with the length of 2000 and the second will be boolean which will be completed whether this to do is completed or not okay so we have that and we have to now connect to the database as well so let's open dot en file and I'm going to change the connection into SQLite. And we can comment everything else right here. We don't need that. And we have to create a file under database folder right here. So right click on that new file database.sqlite. So we are basically using um, SQLite database. Now let's bring up the terminal and run PHP artisan migrate. Hit enter, migrations have been run. The to do items we are also created. Awesome. Now let's close the EN, let's close the migration, and we can focus on the component. Okay, first we have to import the model, eloquent model to do item, which we're going to use in this component. Then I'm going to define to do's property and I'm going to define to do text. Okay. And we're going to use that right now. Then I'm going to create use a mount function. The mount function is used live wire automatically when the component is mount, mounted to the blade file. And it's called only once. Okay. When it is mounted, then whenever the component is updated, this is not called anymore. And whenever um, the component is mounted, we're going to select to do's. That function will be created right now. Down below, I'm going to create that select to do's and basically I'm going to select all the to do items, sort them by created at descending and assign into to do's. Then I'm going to create add to do function inside add to do. Uh, I will create a new to do item. I will assign this to do text, which will be this one. And this will be bound to the input for to do. And I'm going to set completed to be false. Finally, I'm going to call save and then I'm going to reset the to do text to be an empty string and I'm going to reselect all my to do's so that the newly created to do is selected and it is at the top because we sort by created at descending. Then let's create toggle to do, which will which means that when we mark the to do completed or uncompleted. So we get the to do item ID. So we select the to do by ID. If the to do doesn't exist, we immediately return. If the to do exists, we set it's completed to be inverse of what it is right now. And then we call if this is, for example, if this is true, the completed will become false. If this is false, the completed will become true. Then we call save. And finally, we're going to reselect our to do's again because we need that completed state. Uh, to be inside the to-dos updated in the UI 
And finally, we need delete to do. We accept the to do. We select the to do by ID. Uh, if the to do doesn't exist, we return and then we call delete. And when we call delete, we reselect all our to do's again. OK, so that's basically all in our component. So let's go in the uh, blade file. Right here, I'm going to add town CSS classes, flex, flex call with fixed width and margin, horizontal margin auto and parting vertical 16. OK, then we I create another div which has gap and space between. And I create that input which has a wire model on to do text. And this is the to do text right here. Then we also listen to key down enter. OK, whenever we hit enter on that input field, it's going to call add to do this method. We have a placeholder and flex one talent CSS class. Then we have right here button. And whenever we click on that button, it will call add to do as well. And we have talent CSS classes as well to make this button nice. Down below, we have a div with a vertical padding. Inside the div, we check. If the count of to-dos equals zero, we simply write there are no to-dos. And down below, we start iterating over our to-dos. We have for each to-do, we have flex, gap for space between item center padding vertical. And we have input type checkbox for each to-do. And whenever the checkbox changes, so we listen to change event using a live wire. We call toggle to do and we pass the to do ID. So whenever you want to pass the ID uh, in the toggle to do, you simply use that curly braces normally. OK, and that will call this toggle to do with the ID. OK, down below we have the label. We output the to -do actual to do text. And down below, we have the button. We we'll listen, to, uh, that's a delete button. We we'll listen to the click event on that button using live wire, and we call delete to do, and we pass the ID. So this will call this method delete to do. And finally, down below, uh, actually, we need to listen to um, whenever the to do is actually completed, we have to uh, mark this checkbox as checked. And we have to add a line through on that to do label. So we check if the to do completed uh, is true, then we add a line through CSS class on that label. And we also check if the to do is completed, we mark that checkbox as checked. And down below, I have an SVG icon on that delete to do. That SVG icon is taken from hero icons. So if you go in the hero icons, search for trash right here and just click on copy SVG. That is the exact SVG I have right here. OK, so we save that and we can have a look in the browser. However, let's open web PHP. Where is it? Web dot PHP. Web dot PHP and add right here new root to do list which will use to do list component and the name for that road will be to do dash list so i save that and now let's have a look in the browser reload the page and we see our to do list component it is also active in the now bar so let's create new to do and hit enter okay the to do was added another to do Let's click the button. To do was added. Let's reload the page. And to do's are there because they are coming from the database. OK, and new to do is added at the top. And let's actually mark this to do as completed. Now we have that line through. So if we reload the page, this to do is still there and marked as completed. Let's delete the new to do and reload the page. The new to do was deleted. So the whole CRUD for the to do actually works successfully. And we can move on the next project, which is cascading dropdown. Let's bring up the terminal and I'm going to generate that new component. PHP artisan make live wire cascading dropdown. 
I'm going to hit enter. The component was generated. Let's add right here root, which will be cascading uh, drop down. And I'm going to give this right here name cascading drop down. Actually, what name do I use in the layout? Let's open up Blade PHP. We have cascading drop down. Yeah, I'm using this cascading drop down name right here. So we do it like this. We have uh, we have to change this into cascading drop down, and we have to also generate two models: one for continents, second for countries, and we have to enter some seed data. Uh, for that models. Okay, so let's clear up everything and I'm going to generate uh, two models PHP artisan make model continent. I'm going to generate migration. I'm going to generate factory. Um, and yeah, I don't need cedar. I can do in the default database cedar. So I'm going to hit enter on that and I'm going to generate uh, country model as well. Let's generate country dash MF. Hit enter. Now let's open those two migration files and write migration. So create continents table. And another one will be create countries table. Okay. And let's start with the continent. On the continents, we add new property called name. Let's open countries and on countries we add name as well and we add foreign key to continents. Okay, now let's open database, uh, database seeder and we have to generate um, continents and countries from here. I'm going to create a variable for continents and add five continents right there, just for example. And then I'm going to start iterating my continents array and I'm going to run the following command up models factory uh, up models models continent factory create the given continent and then for each continent we create uh, I'm going to go to the countries and call save many and giving right here the country factory make okay and we have to go in the continent continent model as well where it is right here and i'm going to create a function countries and we return this as many country class okay that's basically all so using this approach we create five continents and for each continent we create um we create countries now let's go in the country factory and i'm going to define right here those fields so name will be fake country and continent id will be fake random basically number between number between zero and whatever is the continent continent count okay so let's bring up the terminal and we're going to run php artisan and make uh, well actually we're going to run seed so db column seed hit enter and we have an error no such table continents yeah because we haven't run migration so php artisan migrate okay continents and countries we are created now let's run db seed and database seeding completed successfully and i'm going to double check what's the content in my sqlite database so i'm going to bring up the database tool of php storm go and add sqlite here it is so and i'm going to choose the location for the file that's going to be so we have I have the project in the exam directory htdocs a live wire projects and database in database SQLite is the file I want I'm going to click OK and let's expand everything and we have right here continents 
So those five continents are created and we have countries. And as we can see, there are a lot of countries. Actually, okay, 150 countries created. Why are there so many countries created? If we look at the database seeder, we shouldn't have that much countries, that many countries created, but uh, that's a, just a different topic. Okay, so the main thing is that we have uh, continents and countries. Now let's open our cascading dropdown component and work right here. I'm going to actually close all the other tabs. Just create that cascading dropdown here and cascading dropdown is a blade file. Okay, let's start from here. And first I'm going to create one div with talent CC classes and fixed width. Inside there, I'm going to create one select which will have a wire model on selected continent. So we're going to have selected continent property in the dropdown class. And I listen on change event and I call change continent method from the cascading dropdown. Inside options, we're going to have one option which will have value minus one, please select continent. And then I'm going to start iterating my continents array, which will come from the cascading dropdown component again. And I'm going to create options where the value will be continent ID and the display text will be continent name. Down below, I'm going to create one div, which will have display flex. Inside there, I'm going to have select. In this case, wire model will be selected country. And then I'm going to have again option with value minus one. Please select country. And then I'm going to start iterating my countries and display, I, uh, display the country name and the value will be country ID. I'm going to also add right here a paragraph which has wire loading. So this wire loading, this will be active whenever the component is loading and in updating phase. And it will display loading these three dots right here. And I'm going to add um, absolute left stop so that this will be, uh, this will have position absolute and it will be over uh, the select. Okay. And just like that, we have the blade file ready. Let's go in the cascading dropdown. And here I create a couple of properties, continents, countries, we need selected continent and selected country. And I create mount method as well, inside which I select all continents I have. Okay, and down below I have a method change continent, and whenever this happens, I check if the selected continent does not equal minus one, then I select countries based on the selected continent ID and assign this into countries. It is as easy as that. We don't need to do anything else. So now let's go in the browser, click on this cascading dropdown and we see these two dropdowns. So I click Europe and then the countries are displayed, are basically fetched. Africa. Look at this. So we change the continent and the countries are updated based on that. The, uh, the country doesn't actually match to the continent name. So for example, we don't have Switzerland in the South Africa, Africa, but because we have seed data, it doesn't really matter. The main here is functionality and the functionality is cascading dropdowns. Okay. So I choose the continent and we see loading by the way, right here. And let's actually increase here the time slip one. Reload the page and whenever I choose Europe, we see loading for a long time. And then we can choose the um, we can choose the country if we want. We see loading right here as well. Okay, that's awesome. Let's move on the next one, which is product search. Okay, I'm gonna close these two files, bring up the terminal and run PHP artisan make live wire product search. I'm going to hit enter. Let's open web PHP. And right here, we need to specify products. The component will be product, product search. Where is, where is that? Product search. The component was actually created. Product. Hmm. It doesn't find that. Let's go in the app, HTTP live wire. And I don't see product search. 
the component is there. So let's right click and sometimes PageStorm has problems. So here it's reloaded and now it says product search and the name will be products. I believe that's the name. We can check again up blade. What's the name for products? It's products. Okay, we have to create model and migration as well. So PHP artisan make model uh, product. We're going to create migration and factory as well. So I'm going to hit enter. Now let's open now create products. Okay, again, it has problems in understanding that the file was generated so we don't see that create products right here so right click and reload okay let's open and let's add right here uh, let's actually open product cedar as well product factory excuse me so right click and reload product factory okay let's create migration first now here I'm going to add string image on the product. I'm going to add title. I'm going to add description and I'm going to add price. Let's open product factory and I'm going to generate a random data for image, which will be fake image URL. We're going to have some random text in the title, more random text in the description, and we're going to have random float number between five and 1000. That's going to be price. Let's actually open database seeder and we're going to create uh, products. So I'm going to actually run uh, product factory 100 create and we're going to import that product. Again, the product model, let's right click on the whole project and reload the, from disk okay now it understood that there is a product model and let's bring up the terminal and i'm going to run php artisan well because we have all, already run cedar that's going to create uh, more continents and countries we can either manually delete the continents and countries and then run this or i'm going to actually rerun everything so php artisan uh db or actually migration colon fresh so migrate flesh sorry migrate fresh this will drop everything and rerun uh, and i have to run migrate fresh with dash dash seed as well so this will drop every table rerun migration and run seeds as well and seeding database completed successfully now we can check uh that we have here products table and there we have 100 product items okay so far so good uh, we don't need database seeder we don't need product factory um, we don't need anything we have the we don't need this one as well but we can have it and now, now let's open product search and open product search blade file as well and let's delete this comment let's start with the product search so first, I'm going to add uh, right here, uh, user trait with pagination. Okay, and I'm going to explain what this actually does. Uh, then I'm going to create a string for search. And I'm going to create a protected query string, which is, uh, which is basically the components, live wire components property. This will watch the query string search in the URL and Basically, whenever we change something in the search, it will affect in the URL. And inside render, I'm going to basically make a query. So product query, and I'm going to check if the search uh, is available. If there is something in the search, uh, we are going to add where uh, conditions on that query. We are title like the search keyword or description like the search keyword. And then down below in this view, I can pass the products. So remember, so in other components, we had public properties and that public properties are available in the view. 
yeah, uh, that's actually true. And the search will be available in this product search blade as well. But we can pass additional properties from that view and that will be also available. So in this case, we're passing products and that will be query paginate. Okay. And down below, we'll listen on updated hook. And whenever the property that was updated equals search, we reset the page. And reset page comes from that with the pagination trait. Okay. Whenever we are on the page four, for example, and we change something, the page number will become one again. And finally, about we import the product model and we import the live wire with pagination. Let's go in the product search. And right here, I'm going to add Talon CSS classes on that div, create another wrapper div. And inside there, I'm going to have input type text with wire model search. But in this case, I add a lazy modifier. And that means that this will be updated whenever I blur on that input or whenever I hit enter. Okay. It will not update updated immediately while I'm typing because I don't want that request to be sent every time I'm typing something. Instead, whenever I hit the enter or I blur and we have placeholder. Down below, I create table with T head and with TH, we display ID, image, title and price. And then we have T body and I'm going to start iterating over my products and the products, uh, these products will be basically which is sent from here. Okay. And I can iterate my products and each TD will be for ID, image, title, and price. And we update all of them. And down below the products basically support links method. And we have uh, the product links. And just like that, we have the product search. Let's open now the browser, go in the product search. And we see right here. And look at this in, in the URL. So we have search equals an empty string. That's done by live wire because we told that listen on the search keyword and effect in the URL. So if we change something in the URL, test, for example, test and hit enter, the test is written here. Okay. And if I type right here, like lorem, hit enter, then it is in the URL. And the filtering also works. Let's have a look. Okay, so filtering works uh, actually fine. So we can actually copy this and paste here and we see this product, only this product matches the title was found. However, there, there is a problem regarding uh, pagination. And that is because the styles for the pagination is not included in the final build for Talon CSS. Talon CSS basically watches only those blade files, which is inside the project. It doesn't watch other files. So we don't have the pagination blade file inside the resources. And in this case, I'm going to publish those blade files. If you go in the live wire documentation, go in the docs and search for pagination. Here we have that. The thing what we need to do is vendor publish. So down below. Where's that? Yeah, we have LiveWire Publish Pagination. So if we copy this and open the terminal and paste and hit the enter, it's going to publish the uh, pagination uh, blade files under Vendor LiveWire. So if we go in the resources, views, um, and let's reload the project. Here we have Vendor LiveWire. Here we have Bootstrap. Simple Bootstrap, Talon CSS, and Simple Talon. Okay, we don't need Bootstrap. We can immediately delete them. However, the Talon blade is, does contain all the pagination, um, HTML, and CSS, what we need. So now, already, if we have a look in the browser, we should see proper styles. You see? Because uh, Vite, which is listening to the files, detected new files and understand it, what classes we have been using there and now proper styles are applied. Now the first link is open. If we click on the second, we see the URL has to and the pagination also changes and that is done using live wire. However, for me, the active page style is not pretty uh, clear. So I'm going to scroll down and check, find the place. 
uh, where is that? So if the page is current page, then right here we see we have text gray 500. I'm going to change this text gray into 100 and BG white change into BG gray, maybe 800. So I save that, reload the page, and now this is my active page. Okay. And the publishing uh, gives you possibility to easily customize the pagination as much as you want. And we have now here pagination and filtering as well. So I'm going to copy this paste right here and we see this only one item let's look for many items here we have 64 results for that word and whenever we are on the third page and search for some word the pagination is resetted to the first one also which is done by us from here okay awesome what is the next the next one is image upload let's actually do that uh, let me actually close all the tabs and bring up the terminal and run php artisan make live wire image upload and hit enter let's duplicate right here url that's going to be image upload the component name will be image upload and the name will be image upload Again, PHPStorm doesn't understand that I added new files there, so we have to right-click and reload. That doesn't uh, happen very often for me, to be honest. Uh, that's a very rare case. Maybe restarting the PHPStorm will fix that problem. Um, okay, let's go in the image upload, and I'm going to also open image upload. Okay, let's delete this comment, and let's work right here. So, first, I'm going to import few things i need uh, one is trade uh, with file store uh, with file uploads second is facade storage okay and i'm going to use that with file uploads on that image upload i'm going to create a public property image right here which will be an array basically of temporary uploaded file okay then i'm going to um, create a method for save and that save method will have a validation there as well so it will first validate that each image is an actual image with maximum of one megabyte and then down below i iterate over my image and store them inside public folder okay this will save with a temporary name however if you want to save image with its original name you can call on that image get client original name okay you can do like that not actually this image this is kind of wrong it should be image dollar sign image get client original name okay down below uh, inside the render and view i'm going to pass images which will be all the images which is available on the file system so i'm going to basically get all the images from the public folder because we save all our images there and then I'm going to filter those images and take only the files which have extension PNG or JPG or JPG or GIF or WebEP. And then I'm going to map each file because that's going to give me a file path. I'm going to map each of them into a URL. Okay, and just like this, we have our uh, component ready. Let's go in the image upload. And right here, I'm going to create a form which has wire submit. When the submit happens, and this dot prevent will prevent call prevent default for me. Okay, inside there we have input type file with uh, wire model image and with multiple as well. And if that image exists, this image basically, whenever we choose a file, we create preview. Inside preview, we iterate over our Im or our image and create image tag, where each image has a temporary URL. And whenever you, we choose images, that, that will be displayed. The, the images will basically upload it immediately whenever we choose them. However, they are at that stage in a temporary location. Okay. And then we, when we hit save, they will move in a permanent location. And down below, we create um, the span for errors. If there is an error for image, we just display them. And down below, we create that submit button and we add some Talon CSS classes to that. And at the very bottom, we create a div 
for existing images. So we get all the images and those are the images passed from here, the existing images, and simply those images are displayed uh, here with uh, the following dimensions and object cover. So we actually save that and let's have a look in the browser. So we go in the image upload and let's choose an image. Let's choose only one. And as you can see, the preview is immediately available and I click the save photo and the image is actually broken. So we don't have that. Uh, why? So let's inspect this and have a look. It's coming from storage. Yeah, I know the reason. Because we don't have a symbolic link to our storage. So if we open the terminal, we have to create a symbolic link. Uh, let's actually search for Laravel storage link and go in the file storage and the let's search for link PHP artisan storage link. This is the command we need to run PHP artisan storage colon link and this will create now a link uh, from the public directory, where is that? From the public storage, the public storage basically will be linked into storage app public. Okay, and our uploaded image is saved inside storage app public right here. Well, we actually don't see that. Why? Yeah, we will, we will have a look. And I think we have to reload our project. That's kind of annoying already. Here is our image. And if we go in the storage app public, here is our image as well. Okay. So now let's have a look in the browser. So we reload and we see our uploaded image. Now let's choose multiple images. Click open. We see preview of two images and save photo. And down below, we see all of them. And if I reload the page, we see all images coming from the disk. Okay, that's awesome. And let's do the bonus one. So the sixth one, which is, or seventh one, I don't know which one is that, uh, which is um, registration form validation. Okay, now I'm going to run PHP Artisan Make Live Wire Register for. Okay, oops, for register for. Just hit the enter on that. Actually, already generated, and now. Let's open register form and register form blade right here. Let's start with the component. Okay. In the component, I'm going to define the following fields, email, password, first name, last name, role, company name, and VAT number. Role by default will be customer. Down below, I'm going to define protected rules and that rules is a built-in property. Okay, Livewire will watch that rules. Inside the rules, I'm going to define first name, last name, email, and password. All of them are required with their validation rules. And down below, I'm going to define company name and VAT number, which are required if the role equals vendor. Okay, and down below, I'm going to create a submit method, inside which I'm going to validate, and if the validation fails, this will throw an error, proper error, and the error message will be displayed. However, if it passes, then we have a session flag. We set the following message in the session. Customer was created, and down below, we reset all the properties. First name, last name, email, password, all of them. Okay, and down below, we'll listen to updated hook, and whenever update happens on a single property, we will validate only that property. And this will give us real-time validation. Okay, now let's go in the form. And right here we have a simple form. We listen to a submit and we call prevent as well. And this submit is called whenever submit happens. Inside there, we display, if there is a message in the session, uh, we display that message in the green box. Down below, we have a, a vendor, a customer um, radio list. So right here, we have the input type radio, value is customer, role is name, and wire model is for role. That's for customer, and second is for vendor. 
And down below, we have an input type text for uh, wire model first name. And right here, I'm using the bounce. Okay, and that's really handy also, the, the bounce modifier on live wire. So this will give me a possibility that the first name will only be updated if I don't type for 500 milliseconds. So if I'm constantly typing, it does not update the first name. And that will, that's kind of uh, optimization. Okay, it's not, it's not going to re send requests every time when I make some changes. Okay, and I also have right here, I also add uh, error class. So if the first name if, um, has error, then I add border red 500 class on that input. And down below, uh, we also display the message if there is an uh, error on the first name. And we do the same thing for last name, pretty much the same thing. And down below, we do the same thing for email. We display the error message. And down below, we do the same thing for password. And down below, now we check. If the role equals vendor, we display uh, the company name and we display message and the error as well, normally. And we also check if the, uh, we do another check if the role is vendor, we display uh, VAT number as well with error message. Okay. And at the very bottom, we have the submit button with towel and CSS classes. Okay. We save that. Let's open web and I'm going to hit right here register root register form and that is register register so i save that and let's have a look now in the browser go in the registration and we see form registration form not found okay that's my bet so this view file is register form register for. So I reload the page and here we have that. Okay. So customer vendor. So let's actually hit register right now and we see validation errors immediately. Okay. As soon as I start typing, the error message disappears. Okay. As soon as I start typing and it doesn't satisfy another rule, the message is updated. Okay. Test. Okay. At example.com password something i click register and i'm registered now let's click register and go in the vendor and i'm going to click register right here as well now all the messages are validated i'm going to fill up the form and click register and we see that flash message all right that con concludes our five plus projects on uh, LiveWire for beginners. If you enjoy the video, hit the like button and subscribe because that means a lot for me. Um, if you have any comments, please let me know in the comment section down below. If you want to see a full course on LiveWire with more projects, also leave a comment down below and just tell me about this. Um, okay, thanks for watching and yeah, see you in the next time.